Now, I want to talk for a moment about the new parasha this week. We are in Sefer Shmot, parasha Shmot. And I want to talk about, actually, Exodus chapter 1, verse 1 for a moment. In the beginning of the parasha, and today she is going to be f- based on the teaching of uh, the holy al So we're going to look a little bit today the al and what he has to say, some very interesting things about the parasha uh, that we have in front of us. Let's let's read together. He said, These are the names of the sons of Israel who are coming to Egypt with Yaakov. Each man came together with his household. All the souls who emerged from Yaakov loins were 70 and, uh, and Yosef was in Egypt. Yosef and all his brother and the entire generation died. The children of Israel were fat, fruitful and swarmed. They became numerous and became strong. Very, very much so. And the land became filled with them. Now, we have to understand... I said it to you many times, but I want to repeat this great principle that the first redemption is going to resemble the last redemption. It says so in Micah chapter 7, verse 15, that if we want to understand the final redemption, we have to understand the first redemption. So the book of Exodus is so messianic because it's given us a blueprint for the final geulah, the final redemption, how redemption is going to come to the world. And... If you want to understand what's happening right now in Israel, you really need to understand verse 1, verse 2, verse 7. Verse, I'm sorry, verse 1, verse 5, and verse 7. Those are the, I, I just read you a couple of verses because I, I, I found it appropriate for us to look at those verses. 1, 5, 6, and 7. Now, I wanted to notice what the, the Rav, Rabbi al Sheikh tell us. It starts with the word, El Eshemot Bnei Israel. Listen to this. This is very important. He says, as mentioned, the reason for the, for the descendants of the son of, of Yaakov down to Egypt was to purify them through the suffering of the Egyptian exile from what's called Zoama. Zoama is spiritual pollution that have entered mankind to the sins of Adam and Eve. He sent them to Egypt to purify themselves and to prepare to be everything that is promised to Abraham to be this holy, holy nation and set apart. Now, in the opening verse of Shemot, it's referred to Yaakov by another name. Notice again, this is very important. And the Al-Sheikh pointed a very important point about this. Here are the names of the son of Israel. What is the name you need to pay attention to? To Bnei Israel. Israel. Because the name Israel, as I taught you in the past, indicated the highest level of holiness. And in their essence, Yaakov's children were indeed in this level. However, and here that's where we need to understand the however, there is a still an element of zoama, of spiritual impurity that is found within them. How do we know that although they call it Bnei Israel, they have uh, impurity into them? 
uh, because the, the verse goes on and speak how they came to Egypt and then it's used in verse 5 and it says and all the soul emerged from Yaakov loin 70 and Yosef was in Egypt do you notice it doesn't say Israel loin it says Yaakov loin and here the al is speaking about that. He uses them in terms of calling them Israel, but he's also is calling them Yaktov, hinting that the imperfection has still remained within them. This will help us to explain why the Torah called them Bnei Israel were fruitful and they swarmed. You see, the word fruitful is a very positive word but the word swarmed is a very negative word they call Yaakov and Israel they are fruitful and they swarm you notice something they are called by two exact opposite and here the Al-Sheikh tell us that the term swarmed which is the Hebrew term Ishretsu has an association with an unclean creatures, specifically roaches. Wait a second. If they are fruitful, why did the Torah also call them roaches? Something so is so dirty and so unclean. This referred to the growth in the number of the Ark of Descendants who was not to be able to get rid of their contamination. Those are the ones who went to Egypt and rather than impact Egypt and remove the clip out of Egypt, they become contaminated themselves with the spirit of Egypt. Some were fruitful and some were contaminated by Egypt. On the other hand, he says, the expression fruitful referred to those descendants, listen to this, who would become completely pure. The continuation of the first also make a distinction between those two groups. They become numerous, refer to the first, lesser group, and they become strong, refer to the holier group. The numerous represent the group that was contaminated even more, while the group that was strong is a group that was able to overcome the klipa of Yaakov. You see what's happening here in the story of Exodus is exactly what's happening right now in Israel. There are two groups in Israel. There's the group in Israel that has become like the world. They have been infected by the spirit of Edom. They live physically in Israel, but they are still in the spiritual exile and they are completely living their life with this contaminated spirit well there is strong strong group of people who are full of faith and those two groups somehow have to clash together some stay in egypt and some some, some left in egypt you see that that was the problem throughout our history all the journey leaving egypt there are two groups those who believe God, those who believe to the promises of God, those who stand with that, and those who do not. Those who say, let's go back to Egypt. This is the exact picture of what's happening today in Israel. Those who say, give Hamas everything they want, give them Gaza, give them everything. Just get that back, the hostages. So those say, no, we're standing for the God of Israel. We're standing for what is right and what is truthful. This is a picture of what we're going today through in Israel. Listen to this. He says, it also says similarly, it says also very, very much so, refer to the first group. The land become filled with them, refer to the second group. And the question that you have to ask yourself is which group, as we are entering 2024, which group are you going to belong to? They're all the same group of one people, but they are very different in their outlook. In the same way, the Torah is hinting 
a uh, their reason for the Egyptian exile. Listen to this. Because there were two groups mixed together, they needed to descend in cleansing the other group into an iron furnace of Egypt to be purified. What the al Sheikh suggesting is that the reason we even des- descended to Egypt because we are divided among ourselves. You see, for some brothers and sisters, when we are divided, and when we are not united, God will bring a spiritual dissension because he doesn't want anybody to perish. So what does he do? Israel is one Yechida. Israel is one entity. So he said, let me send all of Israel down to dissension in order for us to ascend together as one group of people. Now, the al Shir continued, and he quoted in connection to Deuteronomy and Midrash Shocher Tov to explain the matter to us. And he quoted the Midrash. Listen to what it says in Midrash Shocher Tov. Tehilim 107 to state, those who God redeemed from the hand of the oppressor will say, Rabbi Evo said in the name of Rabbi Yossi ben Zimra, just like a goldsmith, reach out with his hands and removes the gold from the furnace, so too God took the children of Israel out of Egypt, Egypt, as it says in Deuteronomy 4.20. God took you and brought you out of iron furnace, out of Egypt. Going out of Egypt today, going out of Geula, means that you have to go through hell. You cannot say to God, God, rapture me out of here. Get me out of here. I don't want to deal with the trivials of Messiah. No. The reason we have trivials, the reason we have pain, the reason we're going through, through, through what we're going right now is that, that we will not have to cope. You see, those who want to be a one group without trivial is a group that say, hey, just, just leave, it, leave us be, leave us alone. They didn't want to deal with this. They wanted to be under the bondage of Egypt. There are many people today who just say, take me out of here today. And they are separating themselves from Klal Israel. Klal Israel suffering. And by definition, if we are not suffering with Klal Israel, we are not part of Israel. Let me say it to you in the simplest way. If we are not suffering with Israel, we are not part of Israel. Period. We have to suffer and go to the furnace. Even the wicked, in order for us to become one and a chad. Now listen to explain the Midrash. He says, a goldsmith has to have great expertise to know how to at how the exact moment that the gold reaches its fine, fine temperature, its most refined state, and in this moment he is pulling this out of the, the, the melting, and pulling out of the furnace. How far will Israel go? To the point we melt. So we will get the maximum out of Israel. How far will it go? Is when Israel shed their clay pot. That's how far God is willing to go. Furthermore, because gold is extremely valuable, he will personally reach out and take it from the smoldering furnace with his own hands. He will not entrust this job to any of his working worker, lest some spill and get lost. Similarly, God knew exactly when the purification process of the Jewish people was complete, and because of that, he is the great love for them. He personally took Adam out of Egypt at the right time. When is the right time? God knows the right time. The right time is depending on the human condition. Heart condition. That's what you have to understand today. When is the right time to bring Mashiach? The right time depending on the heart of Israel. That is when the right time is. The Midrash specifically mentioned that it's good, the, the goldsmith uses both of his end. Why is it that it uses both of his end? Because his name is Elohim, but he has another name. Hashem, Yod, Hei, Vav, A. Elohim is a, mag- is, a, is a measure of judgment. Yod Vave is a measure of mercy. There are two midot, a strict judgment and a strict mercy. And he brings the Jewish people out of Egypt with both. 
One of the things that are happening right now in Israel, and I said it in this book that I am begging you to read right now, that Hashem operates in both realms. He's operating in the, in the realm of judgment, but he's also operating in the realm of mercy. Yes, Israel is being judged right now. Israel is being judged. But just because Israel is being judged doesn't mean that Israel does not have mercy, that God does not have mercy. He has mercy, but he's also a judge. He's grabbing them in his two hands. So right now we are crying for mercy while we understand that there is judgment. In fact, it was not appropriate for God himself to descend into the impurity of Egypt to redeem the Jewish people. He should have used one of his emissaries one of his various legion and angels. It was only because he loved the Jewish people so much that he did not entrust this task to any of his servants. History, brothers and sisters, is about to repeat itself. And this is why this book, The Fall of Edom, that is coming your way is so critical. History will repeat itself. He redeemed us in Egypt. He is going to redeem us. No angel, not a seraph. Adonai himself will do the job in the days ahead of us. And we are waiting for these days. He's going to reach out his hand and he's going to grab the Jewish people. Even though it would have been sufficient to say simply that he removed the gold from the furnace, it wanted to make clear that God himself reached out, as it were, into the contamination of Egypt to save his beloved people. Hallelujah. I have a good word for you today. God is going to reach deep, deep into the field of Gaza into the field of Hezbollah, into the field of Tehran, into the field of the Middle East. And he, by judgment, but also by great mercy, Rachamim Rabim, he says in Jeremiah, in great mercy, I will gather you. He will do the job himself. Let us today understand what's happening in the world. We have inside Israel two groups. Those are for God, and those are against God. I don't know how else to explain to you. And those f- groups are clashing against each other. Worse than Korah rebellion. Worse than the Asaf As- As- Suf that made the golden calf. We have half of our population who are making golden calves, and half who are calling to upon Hashem. You hearing what I'm telling you today? So what is God is doing? He make us suffer together. He make us suffer together as one group of people so that we will be unified, so that we will be unified to him and we will be unified, more importantly, to one another. May this be the season and may 2024 be a great season for all of us to be unified to one another. Okay, be unified to Israel, be part of Israel. If you're watching me, you're part of the Hebrew Roots Movement or anything else that is foreign to Israel, leave it. Just leave it. Unify yourself to Israel. And what does that mean? It means that you have to suffer together with Israel. Are you willing to suffer together with Israel? And I pray that you will and enter this, this judgment. Who is judged? Not just Israel. We are judged together with Israel, the remnant believers of the body of Messiah. We have to identify ourselves. I'm going to church to church in town, and the church is acting like nothing is wrong, like that's happening in Israel. Oh, it's Israel. It has nothing to do with us. The apathy, the apathy in the churches is because they are not identified, not with Yaakov or not with Israel. They're neither one. They're foreign. Today I invite you, don't be indifferent, friends. Don't be indifferent. We need to get this message against indifference against the Hamas to the body of Messiah so everybody will become one. Yeah, it means suffering as one. But guess what? It also means resurrected as one. Resurrected one with Israel. May 2024 will be a year of great resurrection with the entire house of Israel. This is the word I have for you to conclude 2023. God bless you, everybody. Love you. See you next year. Shalom.